Great to be here. Yes. So a little experiment I today, I, I thought instead of doing uh, an extensive series of slides and theses and observations, um, I might just do what Josh and I normally do when we sit around my office on Friday night mm. and just talk about the patterns that we're seeing out there, how it's informing our strategy, um, and what we're seeing in the market, the trends, and you know, what this is really all about. So hopefully you don't mind coming along with us on that journey while I grab the clicker. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't forget the clicker. So Josh, you came to us uh, last fall, was it now? Yeah, October, I think. And you've been on the road pretty extensively. And uh, you came in with a pretty unique perspective as someone who'd been focused on infrastructure, had always wanted to build a platform. What's it been like living on a plane, speaking with all the largest organizations in the world? So I, uh, I stopped counting cities six weeks into the year because it was starting to freak me out. Um, <laughs> but what's really amazing about this transformation is it's not a single industry. You know, I, I'm working now with financial services, federal government, industrial, retail, automotive, insurance, um, medical, like it's, it's every industry, every vertical and every region. And what do you, what do you think's common across all of those diverse sets of economic organization that you're seeing today? What, what are the uniting themes technologically, organizationally that, that you see as you walk into random meeting rooms in, in every state in the country and every region around the world. I mean, I've, I've decided to call cloud native the, the meme that binds, Yeah. right? Because uh, different organizations will have other things they talk about. Maybe they have a CD initiative or maybe they're, they're, uh, they're trying to get more agile across the business. But this idea of a fundamental architectural shift yeah. is totally ubiquitous. Actually, I was, I was going to tell a tiny story. James wants me to keep on the clock, so I'm going to immediately ignore the clock and tell a story. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I started programming when I was six, never went to college, and so my first really professional programming job, I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. I was like, I know how to write lines of code, and that will be good enough. So about a month into that, my, my good friend Chris Campbell handed me the Gang of Four book. And at the time, this was a total revelation for me. I was like, there's actually a right way to do this. There's this thing called architecture, and you can think about it, and it totally changes the game. And I feel like now the equivalent of going to college is working at Google. Yeah. And everyone who works at Google comes out of Google with this notion of, like, there are these patterns that you should use that change the game. And so, you know, Cloud Foundry and going out there with Cloud Native Architecture is sort of like handing people the gang of four. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they're like, whoa. We get it. I, I, think, I think that's the point that most resonates with me like over the last year that's changed the most is that it went from you know, the first time I got on a plane, did 40 cities myself last year, not as many as you, um, to start explaining this to people two years ago. Mm -hmm. It was pretty abstract. And what's really happened is that everybody has started to realize that Google isn't different from them. They're the future. Netflix isn't different from them. They're the future. Yeah. And that they have to close that gap somehow and fast to compete. Yeah. Uh, you know, people talk about cloud native as if it's only about scale, yeah. right? And they say these giant scale businesses went cloud native because they had to for scale. Scale is not just about the number of users. It's about the number of transactions, the amount of value. And the amount of value is combinatorial out of the number of just different pieces you're pulling together. So in a large organization, connecting two or three systems, yeah. you suddenly have a scale problem. But it blew my mind when you said you came back from Washington, D.C. Just let's get very, very yeah. Yeah. specific about this. You were in Washington, D.C., and uh, an organizational leader said to you, we know that we're too monolithic. We know that we have to refactor to cloud native, yeah. maybe microservices. Yeah, yeah. And we know that we need a platform. So it's not just one. I did nine agencies in 48 hours. <laughs> um, most of them three letter. Yeah. And they're all in exactly the same position right now. Yeah. They're like, our systems cannot be adapted to the changing world. We know this. Yeah. You know, we went to Agile. We figured out how to build a new release in two weeks. It still took us nine months to push it into production. That doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and we know we can't fix the operational model without changing the application development model. And that's where they saw CNA, the cloud native application, just playing right in. So it was every single agency I talked to yeah. had exactly the same agenda. Yeah, and it was amazing. Uh, uh, Diego from the 18F organization, the government yesterday, had an awesome quote. Yeah. And he said, let's just transition on this one. He said, it's obvious to me that Cloud Foundry is the future of enterprise DevOps. Yeah. Now, what, what do you think he meant by that? 
Well, he also, he quoted it slightly different. He said, one of our developers, when I asked him how they felt about the pilot, and, and, and pilot is a loose term because they went straight into production. Yeah. Uh, he said, you know, if you take Cloud Foundry away from us, we will hurt you. <laughs> Which, you these are the small moments when you've been on this journey for four years working on this that you're like, yeah. maybe, maybe this will work out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, you know, the, the, the difference is so, ra and government, look, I worked at NASA, right? It yeah. took us six months to get a VM. It took 18 months to get the first system into production. Diego's team can get an authorization to operate in three days. Yeah. I've never heard of a government agency doing that, ever. I mean, I mean that it's, was the great- It's game changing. That was the great thing, you know, and the, and the same theme we heard from uh, Andy Zitney yesterday of Allstate. He said, it used to take 100 days to do yeah. this, now it takes 15 minutes or less. Yeah. And asking an unfair question, and this is what this quick note's about here, is that there's a, a really revolutionary thing about Cloud Foundry in that it works. And that was one of the themes that I heard yesterday yeah. in all the customer talks, is they said, hey, actually this technology, we, we installed it, we used it, it worked as advertised. As opposed to, I think, where they've been coming from, which was these two or three year organizational changes around let's go build a platform and unite around that, they're now realizing that they can arbitrage between Google's capability and their own by using Cloud Foundry. Yeah. A lot of the <coughs> other, the, the previous approaches to this problem space, you know, how do, we, how do we make it easy to deal with distributed systems have been either language specific, framework specific, or have required superheroes. And there was a lot of discussion yesterday about superheroes and how we're all kind of, we're superheroes or we think we are and that's super cool. And I believe it, I think we're cool. We wear hoodies. I don't. But ordinary people do not fly using a cape. They get on a plane. <laughs> that's right. Right? And so Cloud Foundry is essentially a plane. It lets everybody fly. That's right. And that I think is really, really powerful. I, I think that's what's so revolutionary about it for me is that the idea that it's, you know, I, I talked to a, a leader at a major banking company who said, hey, we use some, you know, configuration management on top of OpenStack previously. Mm -hmm. And he said, what I really end up building was a snowflake generator. And what it's really connected with me and CIOs is simple questions like, why are you still managing operating systems? This is a simple question I yeah. ask. I mean, Cloud Foundry embeds an operating system in it so that you're just managing at the application level. Much like consuming an Amazon service, like a, a relational database service, yeah. you don't even know what the OS is. You don't need to. Yeah, you really. I mean, I'm, another segue, right? James was building Cloud Foundry when when I was building OpenStack, yeah. and my goal was to be building Cloud Foundry. <laughs> like that is what OpenStack was built for. Yeah. was to get to the structured platform part, because I don't I don't really think like hand tooling to an IaaS API yeah. is, is is a long term strategy for application development. Yeah. And I think, I think that's what's so amazing is that we've started to deliver really on the promise that this works. You can plug it in today. There's 10 Pivotal CF customers speaking here. I mean, this is not like in some of the other open source worlds where they're like, hey, when is enterprise going to show up to right. the party? Right. Like enterprise helped us start this party because the capability is already mature. Mm -hmm. You know, James, part of our job or your job in particular, my job is to go talk to people about what works today. Yeah. Your job is to be ready for what they need in six months. Right. Right. So most folks, when they say cloud native, they translate that into 12 factor, you right. know, and 12 factor has become this amazingly powerful way of describing what a cloud native architecture looks like. But as soon as you actually do cloud factor, there's a new set of challenges that come out of that. Do you want to talk about going beyond 12 well, factor? I mean, the awesome thing about Pivotal is that we are also um, responsible for the entire spring framework community. Right. And one stat I wanted to share with the audience today, because I think a lot of people are really stuck on legacy technologies like WebSphere and WebLogic, and it really clogs their entire organizational structure because they're like, hey, we got to get the WebSphere admin to do a deploy, and it's incredibly complex and they're scarce, and that whole continuous delivery cloud native architectural organizational change just grinds to a halt. And I showed one of these WebSphere guys one day how Cloud Foundry worked, and he said, I'm so mad I want to flip the table over. <laughs> this is a quote. <laughs> And you can see that anger coming out in this mm -hmm. download chart of Spring Boot. Now, Spring Boot is what Netflix uses for their microservices Java. It embeds a very lightweight uh, runtime inside of it. And uh, you can see it went nearly vertical at the beginning of this year, which is another indication of cloud-native adoption. So we had over a million downloads by developers of Spring Boot in April alone. Yeah, that's a, that's a really powerful stat. And, and you said Netflix like, like four times, right? And, and they are the poster child for yeah. cloud native architecture, probably mostly because Adrian has spent so much time explaining it to people. Well, but, what, what yeah. I admire about Netflix is they're built for speed and resiliency. Like 
everyone I talked to, you know, a major retailer was in talking with us, and me and Rob Me last week, and he said, we, how do we transform for speed, and how do we get resiliency in everything that we build? And one thing I admire about Netflix is they culturally turned that to 11. They said, how do we structure everything about our applications to get to 11 mm -hmm. on speed and resiliency? And it's a great privilege that the Spring team works directly with Netflix. They use Spring Boot. And we also have this thing called Spring Cloud now, which includes all the Netflix microservices right in the Spring programming framework. Right. So I actually want you to stop and say that over again, because I went to... <laughs> <laughs> The, the rumor of this got out, right? And I was in... We're leaking was, it right now. I was in Wall Street. <laughs> I was meeting with another one of these very large banks. And they stopped me in the middle of the presentation where this was like a footnote. I was like, I'm talking, I'm talking about Cloud Foundry. And they're, wait, wait, wait. You just said that we get all of Netflix OSS for free? Yeah. This happened again yesterday. I was out for some lunch meeting. Somebody was like, wait, we get Netflix for free. Conversation's over. Let's just go. Let's go do that. I think it's so important because you start to bring the cloud native architecture mm -hmm. not just into the platform and infrastructure resiliency and team management, et cetera, like Cloud Foundry has with multi-cloud, but you also start to bring it right up into the framework. I mean, I get giddy when I see people writing you know, spring code and it says at Hystrix, which is a circuit breaker um, from Netflix, mm -hmm. right in there, which provides resiliency and failover right in the application. What's going to happen is those are all going to be Pivotal CF services as part of Cloud Foundry. So the platform and the programming are going to become one big blurred line for this cloud native architecture. Yeah, really powerful. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the big promises of, of cloud native is that it's not about where you run your app. It's yep. about how you build your app. Do you want to talk a little bit more about how, from a, from a product strategy, we've been addressing this? Yeah. Because I know it's a huge concern across all of these verticals is we don't want lock-in, right? And certainly the embrace around open source has been how do we stay away from getting married to a single vendor? How do we not turn Bezos into Larry Ellison? I, I think in addition to that, the, the two big trends that I see out in the market right now are cloud native for organizational design, agile, arc, app architecture, and then multi-cloud in terms of IT. Because the CIOs don't want to get locked into Amazon. And they don't, also don't want to get locked into the private data center because they know in two years that they might have to have an Amazon initiative. And they don't want to really build two different teams with two different sets of tools. And I think one of the reasons Pivotal Cloud Foundry has been um, you know, the most popular way of using Cloud Foundry in the enterprise is that we are so dedicated to multi-cloud. And I, I know you helped us recently with CenturyLink in mm -hmm. terms of you know, maybe tell folks how we're doing that integration and, and very dedicated to running on any API on any cloud. Yeah. So the, the CPI, the cloud provider abstraction yeah. inside Cloud Foundry is probably one of my favorite features. It's certainly the first part I actually worked with hands-on, right? Yeah. So a couple of years ago, you were still at VMware, I was still at Piston, and we pulled those two teams together to build the original OpenStack CPI. Yeah. And the, the work that the whole community has done in maintaining and expanding that, I know IBM's leaned in on that a lot. Yeah. Uh, CenturyLink actually looked at that and said, hey, why don't we just implement a compatibility layer of OpenStack APIs, even though we're not even running OpenStack. Yeah because that is the much simpler way to achieve interop. And it's worked really well. So I, I think those are the, those are, that's the other big trend is the multi-cloud. And people really want multi-cloud choice, and we've, we've delivered that. The final proof point that we tried to put into the product itself is that we've said our hosted service is included in our software. And I think that's really a, a big proof point for us with enterprise CIOs, because I said, how can I afford to give you access to our hosted service for no more than the software costs? Yeah, you are actually paying people's Amazon bill for them. That's right. Like, that is the, the effect of that is saying, we believe so much that cloud native architecture is efficient. We're going to take all of the efficiency gains out of our own bottom line. Like, it's, I mean, I think you're a little crazy. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really working. Well, what I but love talk about, about is, like, is putting I, it on the line. I explained to them, I was like, well, it's containerization and efficiency of a cloud native platform is what allows us to give you just capacity on demand on our hosted edition. It's really powerful. So it's pretty cool. And I think. You know, all of us have been dreaming about this. I've been dreaming about this for five years. You were dreaming about it at NASA. And uh, it, it's great to see the variety of, of, of customers, really, that have come to this event um, and that we've assembled and the people that we're helping. You know, as a closing thought, I got into an argument on Twitter a couple days ago. Again? Again, as usual. 
about uh, the definition of prod. What does yeah. it mean to be in prod, right? And this, was, this has always been this magical benchmark of how do you know an open source project is mature is when it's used in prod. I was like, well, most of the PCF customers I talked to yeah. went straight to production. Like this was not a concept of, oh, well, we've got to do, because that's what cloud native is. It says there is a single approach that allows you to go from dev to prod in one motion, which it just, it changes the game. You, yeah. can't, you can't have an idea on Monday and ship an idea on Friday if you have like nine months of workflow. Yeah, I think that gets back to the urgency that some people feel to implement and use the platform and get moving with it quickly. Um, and you know, so just in summary, and feel free to come up to Josh and I in the hallways and continue this casual chat. Uh, but you know, to me, cloud native is really about a change in the way organizations and applications are structured. It's the ability to run that application on the cloud of your choice without encumbrance mm -hmm. to any local dependencies on that cloud. Um, and, and finally, I, I think it's the ability to use a structured platform in the way that Google and Netflix have all built these very structured, very rigorous platforms to get incredible efficiencies and agility. No one has ever done cloud native <coughs> without a platform. Either they've built their own or they've used CF. I, I think that's, that's a really great thing to end on. Yeah. All right, thanks. Thanks, everyone.